The following video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around till the end for an 83% discount and more information. Microsoft Windows has had many, many versions, but none have come even remotely close to being as memorable or as iconic as Windows XP. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're going to be trying to use Windows XP 18 years after it originally came out. Interesting fact, this video is being published on August 24th, 2019. Windows XP was released on August 24th, 2001. This is exactly 18 years later. A couple weeks ago I had the idea for this video and when I saw when Windows XP came out I just couldn't help myself. Okay, technically it wasn't released on August 24th, it was released to manufacturing on August 24th. It didn't actually publicly launch until October 25th, but um, close enough. I remember Windows XP pretty fondly from my childhood. The blue taskbar, the start menu, the green rolling hills wallpaper, and also solitaire was pretty fun, although I never really understood it as a kid and honestly don't really still. I think it's safe to say, at least from my memory, XP has aged pretty well. I think a lot of the core mechanics are the same as Windows 10, and so it shouldn't feel too different to use nowadays. That being said, it probably will leave us quite limited. I'd assume anyways, as I don't actually have a PC running Windows XP yet. Now I could go out and buy a used PC and refurbish it for my purposes, but I actually already have an old PC just lying around in my closet. I believe it was my grandparents, and it definitely hasn't been used in years, so it should do perfectly. I pulled it out of the closet, and here it is in all of its dusty glory. It's HP, and as the sticker suggests, originally ran Windows 7. This is good, because that means it'll likely be more than enough to run Windows XP. On the back, we have a number of ports. I quickly noted that there was no HDMI which means we'll be using either DVI or VGA like cavemen. I mean, DVI is still pretty decent nowadays, but you get the idea. There also appears to be no Wi-Fi card, which means I'll have to plug it into Ethernet. I opened up the computer and was met with a fairly dusty inside. It actually wasn't that bad, considering this computer is probably upwards of 10 years old and likely has never been cleaned, but I pulled out some compressed air, brought the PC outside, and cleaned it out. I didn't do a super thorough job or anything because I'm lazy, but in the very least, it's better than it was. I took it back inside and took a look at the components. We have an old looking motherboard with a mystery CPU. I didn't feel like taking the cooler off only to put it back on so we'll have to check what it is once we boot it up. I do know it's AMD as there's a sticker on the case but that isn't really too helpful. We have a couple sticks of RAM and each are actually 2 gigabytes, which isn't bad especially for a computer of this age. They're Samsung sticks and as far as I can tell DDR3 which isn't actually too old. This computer might be younger than I originally assumed. My best guess is that it was at least bought this decade which would make sense considering I think Windows 7 came out in 2009. But 4 gigabytes of RAM is actually pretty good and it's going to be more than enough for Windows XP. I stuck the RAM back in and looked around a little bit more. There's an optical drive which is pretty typical of these older computers and a one terabyte hard disk that used to be the boot drive. For the purposes of this video I'll be using a Kingston 250 gig SSD that I just had lying around which will help XP run extremely fast or at least faster than it was capable of 18 years ago. On the bottom of the case we have a sticker that says warning hazardous moving parts keep fingers and other body parts away. I suppose the fans would move quickly when the computer is turned on but I'm not really sure who would be using their computer with the side panels off and the people who would do that are probably just working on the computer and testing it. Regardless for the entirety of this experiment I will attempt to keep my fingers and other body parts away from anything that moves. The power supply was worryingly weak at only 250 watts and what appeared to be a generic brand. That said, for these components it's probably fine and so that's not something I'm going to bother upgrading. And so now we actually have a full-fledged PC. This thing pretty much had everything. All I have to do now is put in the Kingston drive and install Windows XP. To install the Kingston drive I grabbed an extra SATA cable I had and plugged it into the motherboard and then into the drive. I went to plug in the PSU cord but I found that the PC didn't actually have any of the proper cable ends left. Luckily I found an adapter so I set that up and plugged in the SSD. Naturally this PC PC is old and therefore doesn't have a bay for an SSD. If I was a person who took pride in their work, I would go get an adapter so I could put the SSD in the hard drive bay, but I'm not, so I took some painter's tape and that did the job just as well. Now we just have to install Windows XP, which should be easy. Yeah, so it wasn't easy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's literally the next day now. 
uh, and I've been working for hours on end on on this whole video uh, literally the whole day I've been working on this video uh, it's it's 12 a.m. right now it's 12:09 a.m. <laughs> It's been a process. I really didn't expect it to be this difficult, but it was, uh, and maybe it's just because I was going about things wrong. So to boil this down quickly, because I don't want this video to drag on, I first tried to install XP using a USB. I found an ISO online, I won't say where for obvious reasons, but I burned it to a flash drive and went to boot it from the PC. Oh, and of course, Windows XP is really easy to find, by the way, if you do want to download it for some reason, just look for an ISO. You can buy it legitimately on eBay if you'd like to. Anyways, went to boot from the USB on the uh, PC and uh, it failed multiple times. Every single time, I tried different ISOs, I tried different flash drives, I tried 32-bit, 64-bit, I tried everything. I would always get an error, either nothing would happen, or it would say that the operating system uh, couldn't be found, or something like that, and it, it said that so many darn times, it just uh, it just wouldn't work. So I did some Googling on uh, Google, which probably wasn't necessary to specify, but anyways, I found that for some people, just booting off of USB wouldn't work, no matter what they did. I found lots of little methods and stuff that were supposed to to work but didn't uh, so I finally gave in and I decided to do it on CD back in 2001 and pretty much any year XP was relevant uh, CD would have been the most common way to install Windows XP so I figured that would definitely work so I got a blank CD from uh, my grandparents I just borrowed one and I burned the ISO to it and sure enough I could finally boot from this CD thank goodness it took me <laughs> I really should have done this earlier I, I didn't want to but I kind of gave in and said, okay, let's go get that CD because it just would not go off of the USB. But anyways, once I was able to boot from the CD, uh, everything kind of worked. Windows XP set itself up without a hitch and it did it pretty quickly too. At the start, it said it would take 39 minutes, but it was actually more like 10 minutes. I'm guessing Windows XP wasn't accounting for the fact that I was using an SSD technology that wasn't really available 18 years ago. After setup, I was greeted with pure nostalgia incarnated in the Windows XP desktop. It was was beautiful, although in the wrong resolution. I went to change the resolution, but it didn't really have any options that weren't like 4x3 and wouldn't let me change it to 16x9, preferably, you know, 1920x1080, but whatever, it looks okay. Regardless, this was Windows XP, here it was, and so now I should probably load up internet, right? Well, yes, but first let's open Solitaire. And yeah, no, I'm still super confused. I have no idea how to play this game, so I, I ended up closing it uh, pretty darn quickly. Before I set up internet, I wanted to see how fast the computer would boot with the SSD, so I restarted it, and holy cow, I don't ever remember it booting up this fast uh, back in the day. That SSD really would have been nice 18 years ago. But right, it's time for internet. And this is a D-Link Wi-Fi adapter to uh, USB. I don't know how old this thing is exactly, but uh, I've had it for a really long time, and while it doesn't work well with my modern PC, I have a feeling it might work with uh, this one. I plugged it into the computer and it wanted me to install drivers and ask to look for it on the computer. It didn't find anything of course, so it wanted me to search on the internet for drivers. Well that might be a problem considering I don't have internet and that's the reason I'm trying to use this. So I went back to my main PC, found the drivers online for this, which were from 2008 by the way, so I figured it would definitely work with uh, that computer, and then I moved the files over to that computer over there. I, I keep referring to over there, that's just where the computer is. I installed the D-Link software and finally I was able to get internet working. I opened up Internet Explorer and voila, we had MSN. How amazing. I was ecstatic and couldn't wait to mess around on the web. So of course I went to immediately download Google Chrome because Internet Explorer is awful and trash and always will be. I found the download to Chrome and when I tried to use it, I kept getting an internet disconnected screen. After troubleshooting, it appeared I had a pretty strong connection and that nothing was wrong. So I opened up google.com and it worked fine. I have the sneaking suspicion Bing was just trying to stop me from downloading Chrome, but despite this, I downloaded it off of Google and soon Soon I was using the much better browser. So we have internet, and we've already played solitaire. The next step, of course, would be to play that awesome pinball game. I opened it, and I was having fun, not gonna lie, and I was doing really well, too. It looked like I was gonna die for a second there, but then the ball got relaunched, and all was good. This was fun, and honestly, I'd say Windows XP is probably worth downloading just for this. Yeah, never mind, pinball sucks. 
This video is titled uh, trying to use Windows XP, so uh, we should probably do that. Basic internet things such as email or YouTube or uh, reading the news or whatever you do on the internet pretty much worked okay. Everything looked pretty old, but uh, for the most part, it was capable of doing most things. I had a steady internet connection and everything was working surprisingly well. So I think we should push things a little bit further and try to get Steam and play some actual video games. This PC doesn't have a video card, so I'm curious to see what the integrated graphics will be able to handle. Downloading Steam was about as smooth as downloading Steam ever is. It does a massive update before opening, but everything will work fine and it failed to load. Okay, don't panic, I'll just Google it using Google. Okay, so apparently I need to delete the bin and package folders to force Steam to re-download stuff. Alright, there we go, let's start Steam and it failed. Upon some more searching, I found that perhaps the reason it's failing is because it didn't want to use the newer UI Steam has. So I made a shortcut to Steam and then added these lines after the target, which should force it from using the new UI and therefore let it load and yeah, it still failed. But I wasn't going to give up so easy. Let's see, Windows XP 2019 Steam. Windows XP, starting on January 1st, 2019, Steam will officially stop supporting Windows XP. Wow. I'm really dumb. I don't know why I didn't look that up in the first place. Well, this honestly kind of sucks. There might be some kind of workaround, but at this point I think it was 11 p.m. and so I was pretty done. So I went to download the best game ever known to humanity, Minecraft. Surely this would work just fine with Windows XP. I downloaded the installer and things seemed to be running smoothly. And to my partial surprise, the launcher actually opened and wanted me to sign in. So I did. It was the old launcher, which was fine, but apparently it was ready to download Minecraft 1.14, which is as far as I know, the newest version, and then it crashed. I tried downloading 1.11.2, which as far as I can tell is the latest version supported by Windows XP due to Java, but yeah, it still crashed. Trying to use Windows XP 18 years later is about as difficult as you would expect. Not just the setup, pretty much anything you do will need some kind of runaround to get it working properly. Basic internet browsing, it works fine. It would probably be a lot worse if you didn't have an SSD, but luckily I did. Internet browsing was probably easily the best and most effective thing with Windows XP when I was using it, except as, I guess, a nostalgia machine. If you guys want another video of me using Windows XP and trying to actually game on it and using some runarounds people have done for Steam to get it to work, let me know. Um, that would be fun, so maybe we'll do that. That being said, Windows XP is not something you should use anymore, and if your parents or grandparents are still using it, you should really try to transition them to Windows 10. Windows 10 is better in all aspects. And what's kind of nuts is that the core functionality is is really quite similar. It looks different, but there's still the taskbar, still the start menu. I think it's similar enough that hopefully most not so tech savvy people would eventually be able to adapt. Windows XP, as far as I know, hasn't been supported by security updates since 2014, and because of that, it's really not a good idea to be using it anymore. You're looking at a plethora of potential privacy issues, as well as tons of malware and viruses, and just stuff you should generally avoid. Of course, Windows 10 is not completely secure in all aspects aspects either, but it's streets ahead of Windows XP. It's pretty crazy how easy it is for anybody on the internet to track you and see everything you do. And that's why you should use Surfshark VPN. Wasn't that a smooth transition? I think I deserve some credit here. Surfshark VPN is the least expensive and most cost-effective method out there for you to secure your data and stop sites from tracking your every movement. Whether you're using public Wi-Fi and potentially leaving sensitive information exposed, or even just at home, Surfshark VPN allows you to access the internet from a different IP that could be anywhere in the world and keep you safe from malicious intentions. It also allows you to enjoy geo-restricted contents like American Netflix or Canadian Netflix Netflix, or UK Netflix, or a different kind of Netflix. If you're traveling to China and you don't want to have your internet censored, a VPN is the answer to avoid that. And Surfshark VPN is one of the best ways to do it. Make sure you hit that top link in the description to go to Surfshark VPN's website and use promo code 91tech to get not only 83% off, which is already an insane deal, but an extra month completely free. This is the best price I've seen for a VPN, and I hope you at least can consider it. Again, top link in the description, promo code 91tech. And with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. Now that I have Windows XP up and running, maybe we'll do some more videos on it, maybe not. We'll see how the reception is for this video. If you found this video enjoyable, make
maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you want to for some reason. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.